So we're sitting back, chilling, talking about old school internet software, Farhad. I yeah. can't believe they want us to do this, but it's been like 10 years. And we're still here. Yeah. The university got this idea it needed a campus-wide information system and formed a committee to think about what they wanted. And I got stuck going to the meetings. Farhad didn't have to. He got to stay and work For a while. Stuff. For, For a while. while. And then I got to go to the meetings. And eventually, um, by about February of 91, yeah, that's about right, they decided, okay, make um, a campus-wide information system. but. Actually, the committee had a cool idea, which was it should be a little bit distributed. It shouldn't be one centralized system. So they had one design, but it didn't look codable, at least when I said forehead. Why don't you code this up? And I said, there's no way I can code that up. This is designed by crazy people. And so we ignored it for, oh, about six months. Yeah. Anyway, so kind of necessity is the mother of invention. Farhad came up with a pretty good protocol for doing distributed servers where you'd have a server that would have things on it like directories or documents and it would also have links which would point to things sitting on other servers which could be directories or documents. The only thing that was missing and what I knew we couldn't sell back to that committee without was any way to search. Happily, we had some Next machines around and the Next machines came with this really cool digital librarian which was basically a full text search engine. So we glued in full text searching in addition to the distributed pointers to different servers. And since we only had a couple Next machines, we kind of had to make it so that it indexed stuff on other servers because we couldn't afford to serve everything off the Next box. I mean, I think we only had one cube at that point or two tops. That's right. So we had servers for everything and an index server on the Next box that spoke the Gopher protocol. And we had clients for everything, everything in those days being Unix boxes, DOS boxes, um, Windows was just kind of peeking up over the horizon there, and of course Macs. Yeah, and everything had to run over real low bandwidth links because like you were big time if your university had dial-up internet, dial-up IP like via slip. Everything had to be squeezed down to go over low bandwidth links. What's really funny now for me is looking at these web-enabled phones. They look like Gopher because about all you can do over a low bandwidth link with not much processing power on the client is menus and links to other stuff and lots of text and maybe a little bit of graphics. Let's make it so anybody could publish on the campus and maybe the two things we got really right at that juncture was the protocol was super simple. so that Anybody could write servers and clients. Yeah. And we understood that you got to have full text searching and that maybe the searching and indexing could happen on one box but you were serving information off of other boxes. That made a big difference because it let people put stuff up but they didn't have to do any work to make it searchable. And as was the spirit of the time, we just put it up for FTP and told the world. We didn't even tell the world. We just put it up on an FTP server and said, here's all this stuff. Anybody wants it can have it. And I guess somebody visited and told somebody else. And in a very short time, a couple of months, yeah. we were getting emails saying, how do I do this and how do I do that? And here's bug fixes and here's enhancements. So it's the open source story all over again. Yeah. When you made it so that people could link to things at other places, there's huge synergies. Like we put up Usenet recipes uh, in a searchable index, and everybody else who put up a gopher would have links back to that. They'd put up cool stuff, and it would look like we'd done extra work with getting more content when we had, hadn't. So the great thing about the internet was we could share some of the source and some of the software. We could also share information, and by making it seamless, I think it was pretty cool. Of course, this is all old hat now in, in web days and so on. Everyone thinks, well, of course you could do it. But we did it first. Yeah. Um. We invented cool things like um, bookmarks, saving your place somewhere in this mass of information. Again, a common enough uh, notion now that everybody knows about. Um, the full text searches, the ability to have different kinds of material that you could link to or obtain over the net.
home home pages or home gopher. That's another thing that I think you'll find in any distributed information system. You got to have a way of at the client specifying where you want to start because there are many many entry points. So the idea of a home page or a home gopher and the idea of bookmarks evolve because we kind of stumbled into God. We've got to have this, but it shows up, I think, in every distributed information system. Sort of a latter-day portal, to. isn't it? Yeah. Some one place where you go to or you can go to to, to start your travels. Um, second generation Gopher was after we'd gotten out there for a while and a bunch of other places were using it, we had to do a bump to the protocol and make it smarter. Um, specifically things that got added there was a whole bucket on the side of Gopher to hold meta information. We've been hanging out with the librarians enough that we got the idea that information about the content was a good thing to have. So with Gopher Plus, you're able to find out things